Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Dev Diary. In this week's rather short Dev Diary, we're going to be going over the new Tank Designer, which will allow people to customise tanks to their heart's content. Since the Dev Diary is short, I'll try to keep the intro short too, and say if you're enjoying the channel and want to support me, the best thing you can do is subscribe. So, let's get into it. So the Dev Diary begins with a large chunk of text, talking about the origins of the tank designer and a lot of the inspiration that was gained using the Man the Guns ship designer. They carry on to talk about how with ships, there were so many different elements of armaments that you had to customise and design, which was part of the reason it took so long to design them. With tanks, there won't be so much of an issue, because at their core they're much simpler. Paradox describes that tanks in the 1.11 Barbarossa patch will work around three key aspects. Mobility, firepower, and protection. In a typical game sense, you can only have two and always miss out on the third. But as well as focusing on these three key aspects, there will also be two peripheral things to consider as well. Those being the reliability and the cost. In total, with these five key aspects combined, the hope is that your tanks will, won't be sort of trying to create the best template possible, so much as creating the most specialised template for whatever division you're trying to create. But before we start talking about the new tank designer, it's good to mention that now mechanised equipment will be available to be upgraded with what appears to be the traditional old tank designer, the armour, reliability, production cost and engine. I suppose now that mechanised can keep up with its tank counterparts. Moving on, the dev diary talks about how reliability has changed in its form as a core mechanic. Now it's a representation of the likelihood that your equipment will break down or suffer catastrophic damage. It also takes the effect of being a quote carrying capacity of a given chassis. That makes it the budget or the allowance you're allowed for each individual chassis of a tank that you're going to be building, meaning that everything you stick on a tank will have a reliability cost. The more things you put on it, the less reliable the tank becomes, eventually I assume becoming unusable because you've put too much stuff on your chassis. They do note, however, how heavier and more advanced tank chassis have more reliability, in some cases over 100%. So with a really heavy tank, you can stick on some good armour and still have it be 100% reliable. But We've talked about chassis, so let's get the dev diary talking about the specifics of the new tank designer. So, the way tank designing used to work was you'd simply research a type of tank and use army experience to upgrade it. The new form will follow in the footsteps of Man the Guns, in which you'll actually be researching the chassis, which would be the equivalent of a hull, for each of the tanks, and then adding modules onto the tanks to decide what form of tank they will become. For example, you can pick a light tank chassis and then stick on things like the guns and the engine and so on and so forth to decide what type of light tank it's going to be. So here is the image of what the new equipment designer for the tank is going to look like. So once you've picked your chassis, moving to the equipment designer, you'll find there are now six key things you have to customise to design your tank. Those are the armour, the engine, the suspension, the turret, the main gun, and special modules where you can choose what to stick in there. And let's go all through them as we go. So the first module is armour, and unlike Man the Guns, which had 576 different technologies to design your hull, this is far simpler. In this there are only three types of hull. Riveted armour, which is the cheap, weak kind. You have welded armour, which is your roughly okay middle ground cost efficient version. And then you have cast armour which is your super strong I'm a big tank version. With only having three armour hulls to choose between, picking them is going to be relatively simple, and the only thing you have to do after that is invest points into how thick you want the armour to be, which can go up to 20 different levels. So in explanation, if you were to put five levels of armour on a tank, that would be roughly equivalent to 50 millimetres of armour. As you progress down the tech tree, you'll unlock higher amounts of armour you can stick on, eventually getting to that cap of 20. On the flip side, the more armour you stick on, the heavier it's going to be, the more resources it's going to consume, and of course that reliability budget is going to drop and it's going to probably explode on the Eastern Front. The next module is the engine module, 
and at its core it should probably revolve around only two choices, gasoline engines and diesel engines. Gasolines are very fast and sort of good for your money in terms of speed, but diesel have more reliability, in case you were worried about your tank breaking down constantly. There are, however, additional options, one being the electrical hybrid engine, for all the Elon Musk enthusiasts who think that electric will somehow be the future. For those who do want to pick the electrical hybrid engine, do note it's going to be costly, unreliable, and very fuel inefficient, but it does give you a small bonus to break through and defence. The final option is to pick a gas turbine engine, which you can get from the jet engine research, so relatively late game. These are considered the fastest of the engine choices, but consume fuel like nobody's business. Again, probably a situational choice. Similarly to how the armor worked, just because you have four key choices, the way you upgrade them is by sticking points into the engine, which again has a cap of 20. The more researches you take, the more that cap will increase. The next module is the turret, which is effectively one of the smaller guns that a commander might be using to mow down lines of enemies surrounding the tank. For those who choose to, you can sacrifice the turret for a special type known as a fixed superstructure. With this, you'll be able to stick a main gun which is a class above that of the chassis you're using. So for example, you might be a light tank, and by sacrificing your turret, you'll be able to stick a medium tank heavy gun on top. Since those turrets are really good for breakthrough, you're kind of sacrificing your pushing ability. So this is possibly an option for those who want to have good defense by having a lighter tank for quick agile defense with some ability to defend regions that are getting pushed. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are experts who can figure that one out. The next module is the suspension module, which is rather simple. It deals with reliability and speed. The most obvious options are bogey suspension, which focuses on reliability, and the Christie suspension, which focuses on speed. There are some other kinds too, such as the torsion bar, which adds far more reliability, but is very expensive, and the interleaved road wheels, which is great for breakthrough and speed, but has some reliability problems. In addition, light chassis can also select wheeled and half-track suspensions, which make the vehicle far cheaper to produce, but less reliable. Key choices is all this game is about. And of course, the next module is arguably the most important, the main weapon, the key point, cannon of your tank. There are lots of options to choose from here. Um, there's a whole list, in fact, to go through, but they do give some examples, such as the high velocity tank guns that don't have soft attack, but great for piercing and hard attack. There's the howitzers, which are the artillery of their time, brilliant soft attack, um, anti-air, anti-tank, howitzers, oh, you name it. The whole spiel is here. The final module is the special modules, which are the open slots you can see here. These include the small things you can add inside the tank, such as radios to give you breakthrough and defense, uh, another turret if you can manage to fit it on, just a small one perhaps, smoke launchers, ammunition storage, all that good stuff that can hopefully push the advantage. This is also where you might be able to, with a certain Man the Guns DLC, stick an amphibious drive on to create amphibious tanks. So once you've designed your perfect tank, you'll of course be wanting to upgrade to better versions. So I guess it's time to see the research tree. And here it is. Pretty simple. I'm actually a massive fan of this. I think they've gone for the far simpler design compared to Man the Guns tech tree. Um, the engine's on the left, so the better versions of the engine up to that 20 point cap can be unlocked down there. The same for armor on the right, down to 1945. The key difference that you can notice here is straight down the middle, 1934 medium tanks. You can get medium tanks from the start of the game now. I don't know what the long term effects of this will be, but I can imagine that being a, a big shift from the traditional tank meta that Hoi4 has seen before. I can't say I'm an expert on the tank meta, but I'm sure many of you are. So tell me what you think. Does having medium tanks at the start of the game shift things around? Of course, before we move on, we have to address the elephant in the room, and that is that they kind of leaked the tech screen at the top left. And as you can see, it's much more tight, condensed, 
and it's missing the doctrines tabs. You can see that the artillery goes straight onto naval, goes straight onto air, goes straight onto electronics, without any of the doctrines visible. For those who have been wondering in previous dev diaries, there was a hat icon that we've talked about that was there the entire time. It's now effectively 99% confirmed that that hat is going to be the new doctrine screen, which presumably means that doctrines are going to be getting a major overhaul sometime in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Moving on, there's a new functionality coming to division designers, where you can actually decide which tank template you want each division design to use. So that means that if you've got two versions of light tanks, maybe ones for motorized fast divisions and ones for a more defensive position, you can designate which of those light tanks you want to go to which division template so they don't mix and match and get things confused. Additionally, they've also added an auto upgrade function, which means every time you research something new for the tanks, it should automatically upgrade it, whether that be the armor, the engine, or just a new chassis, I presume. This is important because now upgrades for tanks don't cost XP for an automatic design upgrade. So when you push it up, it should just automatically tick over. You can of course turn this off if you want more control or if you don't want the newer upgrades for maybe keeping the production cost down. In my opinion, thank goodness, because the worst thing for me about Man the Guns was having to constantly go back into the uh, ship designer every time you wanted to change a single thing about your submarines. Heading towards the end of the dev diary, they talk about the new artwork and describe how there's about 1,000 new icons for you to see. Scrolling through them, we can see they're very varied, um, lots of different colour, gun types and all the same, but the historical portraits will still be available too for those who have them. But before we end, we of course have to look through the common section, which is where we find the gleaming nuggets of future information that carry us forward in the, to the dark times. In this question, we were asked, how far into the future could we see the Soviet or Finland rework that so many people are expecting? And Podcat responded by saying, next week is going to be about mechanic-based things, However, if you were to perhaps see something about the Soviets, it's not going to be before ParadoxCon. So for those who are interested, ParadoxCon is roughly sometime around the end of May. So if we're going to see the Soviets, which presumably we are, 99%, it's going to be then. So that's everything this week. A pretty short dev diary, but short and sweet is the way we like it. And it gives out some interesting hope for the future. So if you liked, feel free to like. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.